One value says you will get around 1000 volts per millimeter of distance. And the other one says you will get around 3000 volts. So which one is it? God damn it. And then I found this. That's crazy. Oh, this is gonna suck. I'm a bit disappointed in this one actually. They're actually considerably smaller. And as always, there will be links in the description to all of these modules if you want to check them out. Initiating. Welcome back to my daily grind. Create yourself is what you'll find me doing every day and every night. No time to lose. One day, one step in the right direction. I'm Chris and I'm only here to show you if I can do it, you can do it too. Welcome back to the vlog. It is Saturday, another day, another chance to push hard. And the topic for this vlog is, as promised, measuring all the spark gaps of all the voltage modules that you can find online. Well, rather, of the ones that I bought. So let's get it. By the way, all the product reviews right here, watch them all. But before we get started, of course, out to all my subscribers, thank you for making my life special and worth living to the max. So let me try to give back with a sweet, sweet video. It's a good thing that I split this vlog in two parts because I already edited the last vlog, which you can find right here because this way I found out that the actual spark wasn't that visible in the video so I will try to change that in this one and also well I'm not only going to measure the spark length I will also try to calculate the real voltage because as I said I got this question quite a few times by now on this video the first high voltage generator comparison they state ridiculous numbers thousand kV which is a million volts and that's just nonsense. So let me show you the calculation basics. After a good two hours of research, I found this. It's kind of confusing. You will find basically two values for one millimeter of spark gap. One value says you will get around 1000 volts per millimeter of distance. And the other one says you will get around 3000 volts. So which one is it? God damn it. And then I found this, well, this website right here, measuring high voltages by spark length. The simplest way of measuring high voltages is by their maximum spark length. Of course, this distance depends on the shape and the dimensions of the electrodes as well on other things like surrounding gas composition of uh, many other we're going to neglect that it's not that relevant in air that's another thing that i found out but if you care a lot i think the temperature in my room is actually around 25 degrees and by the way i will link this page kronjaeger.com but just to be safe you never know when a given website will die so this right here this graph is the most important thing because this clears up this question is it 1000 or 3000 volts because it's actually both it's around 1000 for needle shapes and around 3000 for sphere shapes looking at this it already gets kind of complicated these lines here are logarithmic but still one line is one the next one is two three four five six seven eight nine ten zero point one up until one millimeter and if we draw the needle line if we extend this one it will pretty much meet at the thousand volts per millimeter line and the sphere line will as I said, give us around 3K. And what I found to be interesting was that it's fairly linear, or let's say linear enough that we can just apply the numbers. Enough said, let's get practical. As you can see, these are all the modules right here. I have two DIY kits, 20 kV module, two round pulse modules, and two square pulse modules. This is one of the kits. This is the other kit. In the last vlog, I wasn't able to get this to work, so I assembled the other one. This one does work. These are the round pulse modules, the small one, the big one. This is the high pressure 20 kV module and these are the flat pulse modules or the square shaped ones or actually rectangulars. Anyways, I will use this power supply to supply the max voltage that they are rated for. And I went through all of that in the last vlog in the high voltage generator comparison, which you can find in the cards. I will use these two clamps and this measurement tool to measure the spark length. So without further ado, Let's do this. So here we go. Let's start with the 15 kV kit. And this right here is a four millimeter gap. Right, right. This is actually four millimeters. Easy. Five millimeters. Here we go. I think this is where it starts to struggle. Six millimeters. And by the way, I'm at 3.7 volts. Barely. Looks like 7.5 to me. No, I think that's it. Yeah. It can barely breach 7 mil. 7 millimeters at 3.7 volts. Next set already starting with a 5 millimeter gap. What? There it is. That was weird. Okay, 5 millimeters once again. Oh, there it is. It cannot. 
It just cannot get five. Let's try four. It can barely get two if you blow on it. Spark is gone. So you can actually take the spark and draw it longer. Pull it, but if you blow away the ozone, the established ozone layer or ozone path of the air, there is no chance that it will re-establish the spark again. I would say this has a max gap of five millimeters at 3.7 volts. But the thing is, they said that it's actually rated up to 7.2, which it is now. So, so now on 7.0. Oh yes, easy. Damn, this is looking like a really hot spark. Oh my God. Ooh, you can draw it out so far. This is nice, actually. I actually didn't expect that. Let's try one centimeter. Oh my God, it's actually able to do it. Oh yeah, I think I think actually 10 mil is the limit for this one. 10 mil at 7.0, which is 10,000 to 30,000 volts. Actually, let's try the same thing. Oh my God, the cables melted. Let's try the same thing with this one. It does work. Again, one centimeter with the other one. Oh yeah, that's the limit. Yeah, that is the limit for sure. So we have the same 10 mil on seven volts. Now we have this high pressure 20 kV module, which is rated up to six volts, which I respect. So let's try a five mil gap. And let's see what happens. No problem at all. Let's see how much you can take. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. That's crazy. 10 millimeter gap right here. Easy. Oh my god. This is crazy. A bit more than 12. Still. 13.5 right there. Oh my goodness. 15. Ah, oh, that's the limit right there. Back to 14. Yeah, 14 is the max distance for this one. Next up is this little pulse module, the round one. Oh, this is gonna suck. It's looking like a 17 millimeter limit right there. Nope. 16 millimeters it is. Once again, 16. Yeah, adjust it a bit more. Mm, it's looking like 16.5. Let's give it 16 mil at six volts. So this is a big one rated for 7.4 and I am at 7.4 volts. Limit right there. Oh my God, the ozone. So this is an 18 millimeter spark gap. Nope, not. Not possible. It just did 17, I think. Well, that's actually more like 16, but the thing about this one is maybe it can actually take more, more than 7.4 volts. And I will put this to the test in this upcoming vlog right here, but I gave it a 17. So let's proceed to maybe the last one because I think one of these is broken. Okay, this one works. Oh no, this one works too. Oh, never mind. Hell yeah. That's amazing. Okay, so let's start with the with this one, with the flat one. Oh, maybe it was the, oh my God. Oh, maybe that was the reason. Wrong polarity. At 7.3 volts actually. So this one definitely can take the voltage. That's cool. Let's actually amp it up to 7.4. Hell yeah. And this right here is a 13 mil gap. No problem. Oh yeah, that's the limit right there. Oh yeah. Okay, that's the limit. Found it. Looking like a 16 mil gap right here, if you ask me. Yep, 16 mil it is. And the last module right here, last pulse module. Let's go. Right there. 
Yeah, that's about the limit right there. And this is only a 15 mil gap right here. Let's give it 15 for a bit of variety. But this was also at 7.4 volts. Alrighty, so let's get to the conclusion of this vlog. The first DIY kit, 15 kV apparently, yielded a 7 millimeter spark at 3.7 volts, which is 7,000 all the way up to 21 K. But it's more like maybe like eight to 10,000, I think. Then the second DIY kit, 10 millimeter spark at seven volts. Oh my bad, this is actually the first kit. So both of these kits, are fairly similar as expected. They yielded a 10 mil spark at seven volts, which is around 10,000 to 30K, probably like 10 to 12,000 volts, probably not over 15K. I'm really impressed by this one. This thing is amazing. It's kind of, it's fairly cheap and it yielded a 14 mil spark at only six volts, which is around 14K to 24K. So this could actually be true. This might actually be a 20 kV module. So this thing is definitely worth the money. Then we have the small pulse module. 16 mil at six volts, which is pretty dope. It's like 16K to 48K volts, maybe 20K, something like that, but it's for sure not 400. Then we have the big pulse module, which I'm, you know, I'm kind of, I'm a bit, I'm a bit disappointed in this one actually, but as I said, it might be possible to hook this up to a higher voltage, maybe like eight or 10 volts, something like that. It's probably a bad idea, but we can try that. This one yielded a 17 mil spark at 7.4. This is, as I said, a bit disappointing in my opinion, because this is almost the same as the small one yielded, even though this is pretty much, well, it's not twice the price, but it's considerably larger and more expensive. And this actually makes me think that this is the second module that I would prefer out of all of these. So this little high pressure one and this pulse module, these are definitely the best options. This is also the reason why I found them the most on, on these platforms, I think. These are fairly exotic ones. This set was also fairly exotic and this one is another set, another common set right there. Anyways, let's proceed to the rectangular ones. This flat one yielded a 16 mil spark at 7.4, resulting in 16 to 48K, fairly similar to the small pulse module, but considerably more expensive. It's like plus 60% of price. And this one is the most ridiculous one. This was like twice the price of this one, but performed even worse. Only 15 mil at 7.4, which is around 15 to 45K. In the end, you can do the math. I just wanted to provide the spark length because this is the most important thing i think when it gets to these cables all of them are fairly similar so i think they are comparable to the needle tips from this diagram that we just saw and to recap don't buy these they are kind of overpriced well actually you could consider them if it's for the form factor they are smaller but that is the only pro they're actually considerably smaller but if that doesn't matter to you then get yourself this common pulse module definitely the best buy right here. And the other learning that I already talked about in the previous vlog, stay away from these freaking sets. It's a pain in the butt, especially to scrape off the paint coating, like the coating from these coil cables, because otherwise you can solder them. Stay away from them and just get yourself a module. You could repair them, that's one pro, but these are so freaking cheap, you can just throw them away if they break, if you mess them up. So this was a fairly productive and informative vlog. Didn't expect that actually. All of them work. I made it, yay. That's pretty cool. And we also got to testing all of them. That's amazing. So here we go. I hope this was helpful. I for sure learned a lot. Maybe this big one can remedy itself. And this vlog sparked another idea. I know this is such an amazing pun. Oh my God, please kill me. Because I actually have a few of these around pulse modules and the idea would be, I thought, would it actually be possible to wire them in series, thus doubling the spark length or actually tripling the spark length because I have three. And if you're interested in this idea, you can check out the next vlog right here. Maybe this will be the next vlog, one of the future vlogs. Anyways, and as always, there will be links in the description to all of these modules if you want to check them out. But yeah, that's enough progress for today. Smash that like button. That way I will smash this pulse module out of the window if it will break at eight or 10 volts. Anyways, bang the bell like, never miss product reviews. Check the recent news on chrisviral.com. And yeah, that's it for today. I will see you tomorrow.